Hello and welcome to the updated tutorial on how to install Atlas. This is going to be using our new system, which is a playbook rather than the ISO file. So it's going to be a little bit different. If you don't already know what Atlas is, then I'm going to be going through an overview of what Atlas is. If you're already a part of the community and you know what Atlas is, then it might be beneficial for you to skip forwards to the installation part and skip out the overview. In the description, there's going to be a link to our GitHub, which will be able to explain what I'm about to say in a lot more detail. So I recommend you do go check that out if you're really interested about the details. To put it short, Atlas is a private version of Windows that started out in 2020 um, and we designed it towards gamers. As it's designed for gamers, we made sure that our top priorities are going to be performance and latency. This means that you'll be able to get more frame rates compared to stock windows and also better latency compared to normal windows. Latency is broken down into the main three, which will be system latency, process latency, and network latency. We've made sure that all of these are very, very low on Atlas as it is our main priority. So if you're a professional player and you're looking to move towards Atlas, then I definitely recommend it. So now you know what Atlas is and what we strive for. We're now going to go into the installation part of the video. Um, in the description, there's going to be links to our download for the AME wizard, which you'll need. Uh, the playbook, which you'll also need, which are both on our website, by the way. You'll also need Rufus, which is going to be the tool that we're using to make our USB bootable. There will not be a non-USB tutorial in this video, but there is a non-USB tutorial on our docs. If you're coming from our docs website, then I recommend that you do follow through with the docs while I'm going to be doing this tutorial. If you have not seen our docs, then that will also be linked in the description, which will give you a detailed text version of this tutorial. So our installation process is unlike others. You will need to install a fresh version of Windows 22H2 onto your system, and then you will use a tool to then transfer your system into Atlas. Don't think that this is going to be worse than others if you're doing it from an ISO image. Uh, but this will give you the exact copy of if you were to use an ISO image. So what I recommend you guys do is create a folder on your desktop um, and make sure there's no spaces in it. So I'm just going to do Atlas underscore installation right there. Um, and we're going to be saving all the files into the folder when, as we go. So download AME Wizard from our website, download Rufus from their website and download our playbook and put them all in this fo uh, folder right here. Next, what you'll want to do is you'll want to go to UUP dump, which is going to be linked in the description, and you're going to want to make a download. So right here, we have a list of all the Windows images, and this is what you'll see um, to start off with. Um, you want to select the X64 latest feature update. So I'm going to select that one. You'll need to select your language, which I'm going to do in the United Kingdom. You'll then want to select your edition, which I'm going to be selecting pro, but you can select home if you don't have a pro license. It doesn't really matter. We're going to click next, and then you'll want to make sure that download and convert to ISO is selected and includes updates. Windows converter only is also selected and then create the download package. But once you've downloaded it, I want you to put it inside of this folder, uh, extract it and then open it up. Now, the reason why I said that you can't have a space inside of your folder um, is because that this process will not work if there's a space. So what you want to do is you want to click on the UUP download for your operating system. So I'm using Windows. If you're on Mac right now, then you'll need to use the Mac OS version. So running this as administrator, we'll then start the download and the creation of an ISO file. I'm going to go ahead and just skip through this um, and get to the point when I have an ISO file and then we can move forwards with the tutorial. Just leave this on. It will take a lot of time. Um, it's completely fine. It's going to be downloading an ISO file, which is very large. Once the download has completed, it's just going to tell you to press zero to exit. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And now what you'll notice is in the folder, you will have an ISO file right here. Um, I have seven zip. You saw the icon might look a little bit different, but it is going to be the largest file here. So this one is uh, six gigabytes um, and it is an ISO file. So we're going to use that inside of Rufus. So opening up Rufus, double clicking it, selecting your USB stick. And we will be using that right here, going into it and selecting our ISO file that has been downloaded. Now you can see we have some settings here to tweak and I'll be going through which ones you'll need to change. So what you want to open up now is disk management. You can do that by using the search function or you can right click and then go to disk management here. And what you'll need to do is you'll need to right click on whichever drive you're going to be reinstalling Windows onto. So I have an SSD, which is my disk one. So I'm going to be right clicking that and then go into properties. At the top here, you'll then want to go to volume and you will be able to see my partition style is GPT. Now that's going to help us when we go into Rufus because the partition scheme right here, we have two options, either GPT or MBR. So GPT is the recommended partition scheme going forwards. So 
if you went into your disk management and it said GPT, then you're completely fine. Just select GPT and click start and you won't have to do anything later. If you're said MBR, then what you can either do is select MBR here or you can convert your drive to GPT during the installation process and use GPT here, which is recommended. So moving forwards, what you want to do is select GPT or MBR and you'll need to click start. We're now going to get some options so we can select how our Windows is going to be set up. So I'm going to create a local account with the username name Jack. Um, I'm going to be setting the regional, regional options the same as this computer. So that's going to be setting United Kingdom uh, in my case. I'm also going to be, I'm going to be selecting disable data collection because I don't want that. And uh, I'm also going to be enabling disable BitLocker automatic device encryption because I won't be needing that either. Now it's going to tell you that all your data on your USB stick are going to be wiped. If you have anything on your USB stick, then move it off. But I'm going to be pressing OK. Now what this process is going to do is make your USB stick bootable. So once this is finished, we have a couple more steps and then we can get onto the USB stick. Now that Rufus is finished, it says it's ready. We can go ahead and click close. And what we want to do is go back into our folder and we want to grab the Atlas folder with the playbook, the drivers, we want to move that into our USB stick just inside of here. And also the AME wizard, we want to paste that in here as well. Now, what that means is that once we've reinstalled to the clean version of Windows 22 H2, we can move AME wizard and Atlas to our desktop to continue the installation. Now that we've copied those files over to our USB stick, before we get into the boot selection, we need to do a couple of things. If you're using an ethernet cable for internet connectivity, you should unplug your cable now. If you're using Wi-Fi, then do not worry. Later on in the installation, I go through what you should do if you're using a Wi-Fi connection and what you should avoid doing, which is connecting to the internet during the installation process. Now, what you'll need to do is boot into the boot selection of your computer and select your USB stick. You can do this two ways. You can either restart your computer and while it's booting, you can press your boot key or you can use the command in the description, which will help you with this process. If you're using the command, what you'll need to do is you need to press Windows and R, and you'll need to paste that in there and press Enter. It will reboot your computer, and fingers crossed, you will be in the boot selection or your BIOS. If you make it to a Windows screen, where it's asking you for troubleshooting options, continue to Windows, and all that other stuff, you'll want to go to Advanced Options and go to UEFI. If you don't have the UEFI option, then that means you're running the legacy bootloader for your Windows, and you'll need to go into your BIOS anyway. If this is the case and you do not have the UEFI option, then you'll need to go into your BIOS and change your boot selection to UEFI. There's many guides online that will help you with this and it will also be in our documentation. But for people that have made it to the boot selection page, you will see this or something similar like this. What you want to do is you want to select your USB stick that you've just in uh, installed Windows onto. Um, it will look something like UEFI, um, USB stick or whatever the name is for the USB stick that you have and you want to boot onto it. A successful boot will bring you onto the Windows installation where you'll be able to click next and go through the process of installing Windows. If you have problems, then either Googling it or joining our Discord for support or making a forum post is going to be the best way to get support. During the installation process, you will need to press next a bunch of times until you get to the page where it asks you if you want to install Windows or if you want to do a custom. You need to select custom. Once you press custom, you'll be met with a screen that shows you a bunch of partitions for your drives. And this is where we're going to be clearing your drive. And this is going to be where we're going to be wiping your drive to install Atlas. So what you'll need to do is with the with your keyboard, you're going to be wanting to press the shift key and F10. Once you've done that, you'll notice that CMD has opened. You'll want to type disk part. You'll then want to type list disk. And then you'll want to select the disk which you want to be wiped. You'll notice which drive you'll want to wipe because of the size. If for some reason you do not know the size of your drives, then you can boot back into normal Windows and come back to this step to go and double check which drive you want to be clearing. Once you've selected the drive that you want to wipe, you're going to type clean. This will then go through the process of wiping the drive. Once it's done, close the CMD and press refresh. Then you'll notice that a lot of the partitions will disappear and you'll have an unallocated space. Click the unallocated space and click next. Now we're going to be going through the normal install where it's going to install Windows onto your hard drive and then it will restart. Then when you're going through this process, of course, you already have your Ethernet disconnected if you have a cable. But for the people that are using Wi-Fi, this is where your step comes in. Now that you're going through the Windows installation process, you want to avoid connecting to a Microsoft account. This can be avoided by in the bottom left clicking limited experience and avoiding any sign up to Microsoft at all. You might also be met with a page for Wi-Fi users that will ask you to connect to a network. If you can continue without connecting to the network, then do that. After the installation process has been met, then we will be on your desktop, which I'm going to show you now.
So now that we are on the desktop of a fresh version of Windows, what we'll need to do is we'll need to go onto our USB stick, take the folder that we put on there before and put it onto our desktop like I have here. So we have the Amy Wizards and we inside the Atlas folder, we have two different files. Now, because we disabled our, our internet beforehand, what we need to do is we need to run this registry key and then we'll need to restart our computer. Okay, so now I've restarted my computer. We need to go and search for updates and we can enable our internet connection and we can start to check for updates. If you have any updates, just let them download, restart your computer and check for updates one last time. After you've completed the update process and you're now running the latest version of Windows 10, we're now going to open up our folder one more time. Using the AME wizard, we're going to run it as administrator. And now with the AME wizard open, we're going to be either dragging the file for the playbook into this slot or clicking it and selecting it. So I'm going to be selecting it right here. Once we have this screen, we're going to select the run action box right here as we cannot click next. And it's going to be telling us on how to in, uh, disable our real time protection for the Windows Defender. We need to do this before moving forwards. So we're going to go ahead and disable these. And now we've done that. It notices that we finished it. And it says that now this Windows can be this window can be closed. So we're going to close that. Now let's press next and it's going to analyze our installation. It seems that we do not meet the requirements. So we're going to run the action that it's telling us to and it's going to prepare our system. Okay, so it is said that it's been successful and it's going to restart the computer. After rebooting, the AME wizard will automatically open. You then want to click next again and it's going to make sure that those settings have applied that it's just applied for us, which it has. Now, you just need to agree to the AME wizard core and also the wizard GUI licenses. And you can see here that there is some extra functionality, but these are not enabled currently on Atlas, but will be enabled in the future. So we're going to click next. And then this is going to be going through the process of actually applying um, the Atlas configuration onto your Windows install. Let this run. It's going to take a while. Um, I'm just going to speed up the video um, or just cut as this does take quite a while. Now you can see that the playbook has finished, which is now going to tell us to restart our computer, which is going to do automatically. Now we're on our desktop, you can see that the wallpaper has been applied. All the Atlas configuration has been applied, including all the optimizations. There's also the VMware tools because I'm running this inside of a VM, but that's not to worry. We also have a new folder on our desktop, which includes all the information that you should definitely run through. Again, looking at our documentation, this will document a lot of the configuration options that we have here. Software installation, troubleshooting and utilities, which you can use to your liking so now that you have atlas installed what you want to do is you want to install your graphics driver um we recommend for nvidia users to use nv clean install this is on our dock um if you're using intel integrated graphics download it from their website or use sdio and if you're using an amd graphics card then just downloading it from the amd website is going to be the best option again this is all documented on our docs so you should definitely be following but after you've installed your graphics driver and any other drivers you need maybe bluetooth through sdio and uh, then you are good to go you can go ahead and download all the amps that you need and for future updates of atlas all you have to do is open the ame wizards and check for updates which will be announced in our discord server and also on our forum so that's all if you have any questions or you need some help we have our discord server also linked in the description our forums as well which you can go and ask for questions uh, and receive support from our staff hopefully this video has been beneficial and that's it